Hello viewers, good day to you all. Welcome to our adult Sabbath school lesson for this quarter and the discussion. Um, I am Takudzwa Tambanewenyu as the co-host for this discussion and uh, I am with Mrs. Mpupuni. Uh, today I think we'll get on to discuss our lesson two with the title God's Grand Christ-Centered Plan. That's the lesson title for this week. So before we get into our discussion, I'll ask uh, my Mpupuni to give us our first prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the time of studying your lesson. We invite your presence and we pray for the viewers that as they listen, both their lives and ours may be changed and be ready for eternity. We thank you, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for the prayer. So as I had uh, introduced our title, that it's God's grand Christ-centered plan. Uh, to simplify the title, uh, when you look at the term grand, you can think of the words like magnificent. You can also think of uh, most important. So you can simplify it and say it's God's magnificent or most important Christ-centered plan. That's the title for this week. And the key focus is on Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 3 to 14. And our memory text is coming from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. I'll read that one quickly and uh, we'll summarize the entire lesson. Uh, so the verse reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That's our memory text for, for this week. So before I introduce, I don't know, Ms. Mpopuni, if you have anything to say so far uh, before we get into the introduction. When I read the lesson, these are the three points that came to me, that God's plan, grand mm -hmm. plan, is that you and I should be saved. Amen. So plan number two mm -hmm. is that you and I be blessed through obeying Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Then plan number three is that um, we accept mm -hmm. the plan mm -hmm. and live according to God's will. Mm. Thank, thank you very much for the powerful summary of points that if you get confused in the discussion or lost along the way, I think it is important to uh, keep those points. So on Sunday, we'll talk about chosen and accepted in Christ. On Monday, we'll talk about costly redemption, lavish forgiveness. Then on Tuesday, God's grand Christ-centered plan. On Wednesday, living in praise of his glory. Then on Thursday, the Holy Spirit seal and down payment. So on Sabbath in afternoon, the introduction has also three points. And the three points are that, number one, when Paul was writing his letter to the Ephesians, uh, the lesson writer uh, gives an example of Neil Armstrong when he wrote a thank you note to the team that designed his suit when he visited uh, the moon, that the suit was tough, reliable, uh, almost cuddly, and the suit also preserved his life. So Paul also begins with a thank you note. And in this note, number one, he's praising God for the blessing that God has poured out. And number two, that this blessing is essential to the lives of believers, the same as the space, uh, space suit. Then lastly, uh, he's also uh, highlighting that God began uh, this, uh, this work of the essential blessings since before the foundation of the world. So those are the major points that Paul is highlighting uh, in Ephesians chapter 1. So having understood that we were given the blessing poured unto us and that this blessing is essential and that God also began this work before the foundation of the world. How are we to worship such a God who even thought of us before we were even created? 
that's the introduction uh, on Sabbath afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Tamba. And on Sunday, the lesson elaborates the blessing that God bestowed on us, which is the blessing of his son, Jesus Christ, who came to die for us. Mm. And he says the other blessings that we were chosen while we were yet sinners. Yes. And we were accepted in Christ, mm. despite our sinful nature. No reason then Paul says that the Ephesians is actually a thank you letter. Mm. To say, how could God really choose us when we didn't deserve? And how could he accept us when we are unacceptable and steeped deep in sin? So when he describes the, the gift, he says he thanks God for the blessings of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Because the gospel is the one that points us to Christ. Amen. And the gospel is the one that points us to our salvation. Amen. And then secondly, the section celebrates the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers. Mm. So one with the gospel, and then with the Holy Spirit, she empowers us mm. to live according to the expectations of the gospel. Mm. And then Paul also says, God chose us in Christ and determined that we should stand holy and blameless. Many times mm. this side of heaven, we have excuses for sinning. Mm. And we say we were only born uh, of a sinful woman, and therefore, that's our reason for, for sinning. But Ephesians is saying that um, we should all determine, Ephesians 1 verse 4 says, we should determine to stand holy mm. and blameless before the presence of God. Amen. Not only that, we also have Matthew 5 verse 48, which says that be perfect mm. as your Father in heaven is perfect. Mm. So we have no excuse for sinning if we accept Jesus Christ into our lives because mm. he's the one who enables us to live the sinless life. Mm. And then it is also God's intention for us that we should be saved. And we lose salvation mm. by our own sinful choices. Mm. In other words, God is <clears throat> predestined that we all qualify for salvation. Amen. The only thing we have to do is just to choose, to say, mm. okay, I want to choose this, to obey mm. this salvation, to accept the salvation Indeed. which is freely given to everyone. Mm. And... Because of those points, the book of Ephesians has also been described as a handbook for Christian worship. Okay. Amen. If you want to know how to worship, read mm. the book of Ephesians because it encapsulates stages a Christian may follow mm. to the perfection which is expected of us. Mm. And then it also points that heaven is our dwelling place according to God. God Amen. has predestined us mm. and qualified us for heaven. But we, you and I, have a choice to make. Mm. And then we should also celebrate how God works in the lives of people. And Paul was the best person to write this because of his background. Mm. A mm. murderer, mm. a persecutor of Christians, mm. and somebody who was really anti-gospel. Mm. That's why he celebrates to say, praise God for the gospel. Amen. It transforms us. Mm. Thank mm. you very much. Th thank you mm. very much. I, I liked the point that you concluded with that Paul was a perfect example, which on Monday, we have the subtitle, Costly Redemption and Lavish Forgiveness. And in that, um, uh, in, in what the writer wrote, he shows that he was once part of a sinful and dark world which he could not rescue himself. He needed someone who could rescue him. Uh, I think the verse that we are quoted there is uh, Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 3. And uh, the, the, the Bible actually uses the words dead in trespasses and sins yet walking or living as Satan commanded them. Uh, so in other words, Paul, in writing this, he is saying uh, the Christians of, F of Ephesians, they, they were actually dead in trespasses and sins, walking and living as Satan commanded, but being Christians, right? So they had no ability to free themselves. They needed a rescue. So it is only God who did so through the gracious actions of what? Of Christ. So he was now celebrating the blessings of God's grace. So they brought, number one, redemption 
and number two, forgiveness. So on redemption, uh, we are given the Greek word, which is apolutrosis, which in the original term, it means uh, paying for a free to a free captive or buying slaves freedom. Uh, so when we hear the term redemption in Ephesians, uh, for example, on uh, chapter 1, verse 7, it is indicating that we were bought. In other words, Christ bought the price for our freedom from the slave, from the slavery of what? Of sin or from being slaves uh, to, to, to Satan's yoke. So having been bought or redeemed, we are now not as objects, but we become citizens of heavens, no longer slave to what? To uh, the, 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 the Saturn, to Saturn or to, to the sinful world. So uh, the other benefit that we also get is forgiveness of our trespasses. So when Christ died on the cross, he took upon himself the price of our sin, both the, the past and even the future. But we have to accept Christ and we have to come and ask for that forgiveness. So he has canceled that debt, which we were supposed to pay uh, through sinning. So to us as Christians, what we need to understand, remember the title that was saying, costly redemption and lavish forgiveness, which meant that the death of Christ was very costly. Right, But lavish forgiveness means the generous forgiveness of God, showing the mercies of God. So how are we to worship such a God who paid a price which is very costly and also in terms of forgiveness, very merciful and very generous? I think on Monday, those are some of the points that I think we, we will find in the lesson. Oh. Powerful. So we, in other words, we are saying we are a product of forgiveness. Yes. Yes, yes. So which actually qualifies us for God's grand and Christ-centered plan. Mm -hmm. When God forgave us, how did he do it? Mm -hmm. He sent Christ to adopt us mm -hmm. when we didn't deserve it. I think the idea of adoption got clearly to me a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. I went to HR and then I was started asking, on what grounds is one given our compassionate leave? <laughs> and then they said, Mrs. Mbukuni, we, we give compassionate leave for people you have adopted and you have the papers. <laughs> <laughs> so when I look at our adoption yeah. papers, mm -hmm. I noticed that they were signed at Calvary by mm -hmm. the death of Christ. Mm -hmm. And in other words, without that signature yes. of the death of Christ, mm -hmm. we wouldn't qualify to be real wow. sons and daughters of God. Mm -hmm. And God's ultimate plan with us is to unite us, mm. everyone, everywhere in Jesus Christ. Mm. Despite your nationality, mm. despite mm. your country of origin, yes. your social background, your economic status, yes. God is saying his gift is free for all. Amen. And what a wonderful God we worship. Amen. Then the other grand plan is that um, <coughs> it was, the other part of, about the grand plan is that it was crafted before the foundation of the world. Imagine. Mm, that's powerful. And God's aim mm. before the foundation was of the world was that all of us would be saved. Yes. If we make the right choices. Mm -hmm. And then we also find that um, as time moved on, people started dividing themselves mm. by race. Mm. I'm Greek, you are Jew. Yeah. I'm of a better class. I am this. Yeah. And, uh, but however, the founding church was preached to by Paul mm. to say, you are all bought with the same blood of Jesus yes. Christ mm -hmm. in spite of your race. Mm. And do not allow the evil powers to bring these divisive elements among mm. you as the body of Christ. Mm. And actually, when Paul describes the church, he says, you are the body of Christ. Mm. Mm. And the mm. body cannot be divided against itself. Yes, mm. So racial divides mm. should not actually divide us anyway. And we will find the devil is constantly using divide and rule method yes. to win yes. us. It tries to tell us that, oh, you are from this part of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. You are from this kind of clan. Mm -hmm. You are from, but God's aim is that we all be saved. And that mm -hmm. is his grand plan. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. Ah, thank you very much. I, I, I think the points are coming out clear that God's message for us uh, started even before creation. What a powerful God we serve. On Wednesday, we, we look at living in praise of his glory. Now, on Wednesday, the main focus is that believers are not just victims of uh, an arbitrary decision uh, by some deity or by some power, right? But they, they are children of God who have access to many blessings through Christ based on the deep counsels and eternal decisions of God, meaning it is God's purpose for us as Christians to have uh, this blessing. I will read uh, Ephesians 1 verse 11, which says, In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. So explain, explaining this verse, uh, as I have uh, initially mentioned, that it's not an arbitrary decision that was made. So having read the verse, we should have unshakable confidence when we stand before God, right? And also in the effectiveness of the blessings that God has provided, right? So in our lives, it should shout the message that is coming out in Ephesians of the blessings. And the powerful blessing that is key in this week's lesson is the blessing of Christ, mm -hmm. the blessing of forgiveness, the blessing of redemption. So that blessing is the blessing that we need to shout out the message that it be known. Uh, also, one thing we note is that um, in Paul's view, by virtue of the death of Christ, Christians have received an inheritance from God and become an inheritance. Uh, there is an illustration that, that is given uh, that at times when, when people die, they, they, they leave something for people to inherit because they are now late. Uh, but in this case, what Paul is saying, Christians have not only received an inheritance by the death of Christ only, but they have also became an inheritance of God. Why? Because they have chosen also Christ. So that is the two way that we see in the inheritance of uh, of God and also becoming an inheritance to God. I think I, I have tried to explain it. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yes. So you find that God does not have a tight budget. Yes. <laughs> he lavishes it mm -hmm. on us all. Yes. If we choose him. So he's a generous God to a, a person, any person mm -hmm. who yearns to do his will. Amen. Yes. Then the Holy Spirit now, the seal and the down payment. Mm. Uh, the terms that I used in this lesson are quite relevant. I, I know many times you want to buy something. Mm -hmm. You are required to do a down payment. Yes. To say, okay, I'm promising that this will be mine. Mm. So I'm looking at this uh, process which Jesus took. First, he loved us before we loved him. Mm. And then he predestined us for salvation. Mm. It did not end there. He sent Jesus to die for us. Mm. And Jesus then signed papers at Calvary yes. to say, now you belong to me. But that mm. was not enough. Mm. He then says, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit mm. so that it can seal you who have chosen me mm. so that you don't depart from me. Amen. And that Holy Spirit then becomes our down payment for salvation. Mm. That's a beautiful transaction, isn't it? Mm. Which warrant is our salvation? So we find that um, God is choosing us and making us a part of his glorious grace, mm -hmm. which we don't deserve. Mm -hmm. And I'm reminded, Mr. Samba, when you're talking about something you work for, 
in the inheritance, what do you yeah. value more? <laughs> <laughs> in inheritance, it comes free of charge, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So when God says salvation is an inheritance, which is free for all humans, mm -hmm. we should embrace it more because it's less sweat yes, <laughs> and it's free for everyone, <laughs> provided you just choose. Amen. Then Ephesians 1 verse 13 to 14 mm. says to us, I will read the last part, it says, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Mm. Um, the idea of sealing something in the um, long ago meant a sign of possession. Mm -hmm. It's mine, it mm -hmm. belongs to me. Mm -hmm. And more so, when you make a down payment for it, mm -hmm. you are saying, this is totally mine. And that's yes. exactly what God did for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. When he does for us, when he seals us with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. After paying the down payment at Calvary. Mm. So it says that um, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit from the time we are converted. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, the Holy Spirit drives us into doing mm -hmm. the will of God. Mm -hmm. And then, in other words, we are just imprinted, mm -hmm. uh, the Holy Spirit is imprinted on us. And by imprinting its influence on us, it's announcing to the evil one that. These people belong to me. Yes, it's I've sealed. protected them mm -hmm. and I've sealed them. Amen. It also reminds me of uh, the job stone mm -hmm. where the devil argues that you have put a protective Two, edge yes. around Job. Mm -hmm. That's typically what happens to Amen. us when we choose Christ. God puts Amen. a protective edge mm -hmm. around us. But that doesn't mean that the devil will not try Indeed. his tricks on us. He'll mm -hmm. try many things mm -hmm. to actually distract our attention mm -hmm. from the fact that we've been sealed by God. Mm -hmm. But as long as he comes in any form, let us remember always to call on the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and remind ourselves that we belong to God. Mm -hmm. We are a precious possession, mm -hmm. which is not just adopted. It's sealed. Mm -hmm. A down payment has been paid for it and it's waiting for salvation. Mm -hmm. um, he says that uh, the good thing is that salvation is a free gift. Yes, it's we free. We don't pay anything. Mm. It's only God who's doing the action verbs. Yes. He's sealing. Yes. He's adopting. <laughs> he's paying the down payment. Yes. All we need to do is just to receive mm. and live according to his plan. Mm. Wow. Um, and because this is free, I want to invite you, viewers, mm. myself included, mm. to accept the salvation free Amen. as we prepare for eternity. Amen. Amen. Uh, th thank you very much for joining us in this uh, discussion that we had. Uh, it is my prayer and my hope that uh, we had a wonderful discussion and uh, the points that we managed to pick out of this lesson will also help our viewers in their salvation and also in our salvation. May the Lord bless you all. Uh, now it's goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>